Good morning. Today I'm going to trans uh, transport you to 100 to 500 kilometers away from Bhopal, where rural India exists. And I'll talk to you about the potential of digital technology and artificial intelligence and what it could do to completely transform the lives of these people and bring the satisfaction that you get out of doing so. So what does this rural India mean? What does it say to you? What is the picture that con it conjures in your head? 640,000 villages and 800 million people. That's larger than the population of most of the nations in the, in the world. So, you know, the, the, the question that comes to my mind is, what has this rural India got to do with anything that is this geek word called artificial intelligence? What is AI? What does that word mean? You know, we learn technology. But the beauty of AI is that it learns us. It observes us. It looks at the way we are answering questions. And then, taking that data point, it then anticipates what our answers will be in a certain situation. That's AI. Simplistically speaking, that is AI. So the question that comes is, why is it happening now? Why not 10 years back? Why not 15 years back? And the reason why artificial intelligence time is now is because of these three factors coming together. We've harvested data over a period of time, lots of it, tons of it, but we couldn't do anything with it. The advent of cloud technologies with its capacity to process millions of computers, you know, coming together synergistically and being able to analyze that data real time. And when you combine that with powerful algorithms, artificial intelligence is born. You'll find people driven to move the world forward. People finding inspiration where it's least expected. People who lead with their imagination. But in an increasingly complex world, we face new challenges. And sometimes it feels like we've reached our limits. Now, with the help of intelligent technology, we can achieve more. We can access information that empowers us in new ways. We can see things that we didn't see before. And we can stay on top of what matters most. When we have the right tools and AI extends our capabilities, we can tap into even greater potential. Whether it's a life-changing innovation, being the hero for the day, making a difference in someone's future, or breaking down barriers to bring people closer together. Intelligent technology helps you to see more, do more, and be more. And when your ingenuity is amplified, you are unstoppable. Amplifying human ingenuity. Imagine if you could do that to 800 million people. India would fly on the wings of fire if you could bring these 800 people to reach their full potential. And I'm not kidding about it. That's the potential of this country. 800 million people, and a lot of them, 50% of them are very, very young. They could do amazing things. So let's look at areas that are of importance and what AI could there, do there. The first that is closest to my heart, uh, and it comes from you know, spending my childhood in, in a small village uh, from which, uh, which I hail, that that profession is that age-old profession called agriculture. In any near time, in foreseeable futures, we're still not drinking hardware and digesting software. We are still down to wheat and rice. 
So agriculture, you know, even though we don't relate to it every day, is the most important thing that a farmer does, that your village brethren do. And the potential to change that landscape with newfound knowledge from AI is just amazing. Think of all those sensors that could be put on the ground so that the soil tells you what it will grow best. Think of the drones that you could put on those farms right near the harvest and you will know whether there is abundance of wheat and what minimum support price you should have or scarcity of rice and what you need to import so that people get a good diet. Then there is this challenge of parasites. You know, the blight, the, the black cotton, uh, you know, soil has, the black cotton has uh, a blight. If only you could take pictures of these and stitch them together, you will know the early onset of parasites that are plaguing these plants and take action on it. Precision farming. There are lots of areas in India that are not uh, that well water fed. Bhopal is not one of them. But there are other areas that have scarcity of water. If you could precisely provide water at the right time in the right weeks, you could still grow a great harvest. All that is possible through AI now because of those three things that I said. Big data, huge amount of compute, and algorithms that will tell you what needs to be done. Healthcare, another very, very large area. And we don't have to go through this traditional route where a doctor needs to sit next to the patient in order to give them advice. Telemedicine, a smart doctor, a brilliant doctor, and there are not that many of them, sitting in some city, fine, providing advice over telemedicine to a poor villager in the confines of some location where there might even not even be a, a road to reach there. Telemedicine, teleoptothalamic devices, we have tried that. Mobile pathology labs, believe it or not, it's possible to take all your blood work and urine work and all the, all the other 36 tests that will tell exactly what your you know, important parameters are and provide you that information in five minutes. Predictive analysis of diseases, why is it not possible for us to look at this wonderful technology and look, work through the data from social networks and ahead of time find out when the dengue or chikungunya or malaria is about to spread its wing and cut it right there, right in the beginning, not allow it to spread. All that is today possible because of the power of this technology. Another very interesting problem that plagues rural India left, right and center. You know, you go there and you see the kind of water that people are drinking and you think to yourself, what good is technology if it cannot help these people? And it can. I was looking at some places where water is really bad and this is, water is your life. You don't drink it, you dehydrate and you die. What if IoT-based systems could be installed on these pumps so that you know exactly what type of water you're about to drink and take corrective action, clean it up. Simple things that could change the way we live in rural India. Education, this is my favorite one. There is no dearth of smarts in the village. The gray matter in their heads is just as good as that in, in the city boys. What if artificial, uh, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality-based teaching could be introduced to them? It's a fact that when you supplement your senses with eye, uh, seeing, hearing, and touching, the experience that leaves in your mind is far stronger than by learning by rote, which is a traditional way. Take a book, read it, learn it, and then regurgitate it in an exam. What if AR and VR could allow you to touch and feel the things and learn it that way? Again, it is possible. And on the other side, there are the teachers. How do you know what student needs what help? Predictive modeling for finding out Ram has 99% probability of passing and Sham is in trouble educationally. 
If you could do that, you would intervene ahead of time, a year in advance. And as a result of it, Sham, even though he was in trouble a year back, by the time he comes to that you know, final point, he's ready. This is happening today. Better teaching and learning solutions. So let me give you just one simple example uh, from Tacoma Public Schools. They had this problem of fewer graduations at the time. And what they did was they started rigorously looking at all these data, put a machine learning AI-based model, and predict which student needed what help at what point of time. And the results are right there. Their graduation rate improved from 55% to over 82%. So let me show you what I mean by this augmented reality systems and what this assisted learning could be like. Let me take you to this world of HoloLens and let you imagine if the students had access to this in a, in a surrounding in which they could interact with the things that they want to learn rather than learn it from a book, how much higher will be their learning? If we could go beyond the screen, where your digital world is blended with your real world, now we can. This is the world with holograms. What will they enable us to do? New ways to visualize our work. I have an idea for the fuel tank. New ways to share ideas with each other. How are things going your end? I just put the images in OneDrive. Perfect. More immersive ways to play. New ways to teach and learn. So put the new trap in the place of the old one. Now what? And tighten here and here. New ways to collaborate and explore the places we've never been. Look at this formation. Let's take a closer look. And new ways to create the things we imagine. Because when you change the way you see the world, you can change the world you see. So there you have it. AI can take you where no man or woman has gone before. This famous tagline from Star Trek that I remember from my childhood. So with that, let me just take you to a real village. This village, before we got started there, was best known for as the malnutrition capital of India with infant mortality that was in 30s. It was just terrible. You know? And the first time we went there, we could not even get a phone call not even phone connectivity. And here are these mad people who are thinking they will bring high-speed internet. And we did. We used this new technology called TV White Spaces. We were able to bring high-speed internet in less than eight days to this remote village. And the first experience that this, the people in this village had of connecting to the rest of the world was WhatsApp and Skype. They learned it. They learned it. They learned it before the phone. So that's the adaptability of this group. Once the internet was established, we started doing all manner of things. We had mobile pathology lab set up, we had a telemedicine center set up, we had e-learning, small children understanding how to surf the internet. We had e-PDS system, we had e-banking, and we had e-governance, and a whole bunch of other things. Today, Hari Sal, if you will search on the net, will share its own stories. Not everything is done. It couldn't be, but an amazing uh, you know, beginning has been made. And more specifically, what we have learned from there could be replicated in the rest of those 640,000 villages. Thank you. Mm -hmm.